What if I told you there's a way with science to very easily, for less than $30 Canadian, which is probably is less American, test your entire garden for a host of different problems. I'm talking knowing where your nutrients at is at with your soil, knowing when to actually physically harvest something at peak ripeness with the peak amount of mineral content, being able to compare your fruits and vegetables to grocery store brands to see if you truly do have better produce than the grocery store, and even knowing how you, how and when you need to protect the plants against insects and disease. I'm not pulling your leg here. There is something out there that can do all of this and more. So the end of this video for funsies, I am going to be testing kale. Now, the reason I'm testing kale, I'll show you how to test like regular produce as well, like tomatoes, for example, but I'm going to be testing kale and specifically comparing grocery store kale to garden kale to see if I have higher nutrient and sugar content in them, uh, specifically for my garden. I want to know if I'm better than Galen Weston, essentially, which we already know I am, but we just need scientific proof at this point. The reason I'm choosing to compare those is because they're slightly different in how you test a green leaf versus a tomato or something of that effect. But I will show you how to test tomatoes and jalapenos and all that fun stuff as well. It's just the comparative is going to be between two kales. And you guys actually can do the rest of it on your own and let me know in the Facebook group or down below in the comments how it turned out, whether or not you have produce that is better than the grocery stores. So what we're looking at is something called BRICS. B-I-B-R-I-X. I didn't pass spelling, sorry. Anyways, BRICS. And this is simply measuring sucrose and the elements inside of, or minerals inside of your plant. This can be used on the physical biomass foliage, meaning the stems, the leaves, you name it. It also can be and famously is mostly used on the actual physical produce. So whether it's a grape, which is where it's mostly used is in the wine industry, whether it's your tomatoes, your jalapenos, etc. and so forth. Now we know all biomass, both above ground and below ground, is a result of the nutrients that your plant has pulled out of your soil, which means that whatever nutrients is in your soil is now in your plant. And so this is why we have to fertilize. We are taking stuff away from the system. A forest, a grassland, everything stays in place. And before you say the plant, the, the, the animals run off with the nutrients, no, the animals eat it and then they in in the field. So technically everything does stay there. It just gets moved around a little. So if we have grown too much and then removed without replenishing, we would have a lower bricks indicator. And this is a sign that we need to add fertilizer. Now, if you have a low bricks indication, this does not mean <laughs> you need to go dump on fertilizer. Uh, it means you need to stay within the lanes. The reason for this is because if you now just go dump compost or manure or synthetics onto your garden, which by the way, if you're new to the Geek Crew, we don't care how you put fertilizer on, conventional or organic, don't give a shit, do what you want. So when you do this, you can throw things even more out of whack and your lack or your lower bricks measurement actually may be a result of too much fertilizer causing an imbalance because fertilizer uh, minerals specifically compete, compete pretty heavily for the sites that uptake the nutrients. So plant roots have a both an active and a passive version of transport. And unfortunately, a root can only let so much through and nutrients compete against each other is bottom line. The way, and this can obviously cause nutrient issues. The other thing to look at is how you water. So if you're going through a drought year, if you know your watering hasn't been up to snuff, so if you have things like blossom end rot, um, wilting plants, 
you know you were in a drought, you can expect a lower bricks indicator because the plant has been able to uptake less stuff. Now I do have some tomatoes with blossom and rot and I have some that are healthy. So I am going to compare the blossom and rot ones to the regular ones, same variety, same plant even, to see if there is a difference in the actual bricks value between the very clearly malnourished tomato and the ripe plump one. Now, one thing we can do if we see a low bricks value and we think it's a result of our soil nutrients, we can pivot and try to make up for lost time. The way we would do that is for through foliar fertilizer. Now, not all nutrients can be take up taken up through foliar applications, but there are some, most of which are micronutrients, but it's an indication of low nutrient content. And regardless of the reason, whether it's too much fertilizer or under fertilization or lack of water, the way to get it into the plant without risking causing more damage is to foliar apply that and see some better results. So that's a way to pivot quickly without going crazy. Okay, so the next thing before we get to testing is looking at bricks from the perspective of its ability to tell us how and when we are going to end up with an insect, a fungal, or a bacterial issue. Okay, so let's look at pests first. The insects themselves don't like sugar content. They're orthorexic in a way, and because of that, they don't choose to and won't chew on plants with a higher bricks value. The sugar content is simply too high. Eight is the comfortable one. Some people say 12. Eight, in theory, probably is good enough. And keep in mind, this is one factor of many that can determine whether or not you're going to have a pest issue. For example, if you use too much nitrogen, you have excessive growth, uh, very soft tissue growth. If you have lack of calcium, you have soft tissue issues potentially. These also can lead to pest problems. So don't get me wrong. This isn't like a, an end all be all. If you're above eight, you're good. It's just you're better. You're better than what is possible otherwise. When it comes to disease and fungus, it actually just comes down to the health of the plant in its entirety. So the plant itself likes to sit at above an eight bricks level. And because of this, if it's below that, it's just an indication of a plant that's not healthy and therefore an unhealthy plant can become infected more easily. And that rule applies to humans. It applies to plants. A, a plant that's not at peak performance doesn't perform as well, and we know that. And that's the reason for that. It actually doesn't have anything to do necessarily with the makeup of the plant. It has to do with the plant as a whole. So I am going to, this is a weapon. I'll tag in this down below if you wanna grab one. I will now know, if you know the upside down pineapple rumor, I will now know if you're a Geek Cream me member, if you're walking around the grocery store with a bricks tester, uh, testing all the produce, so. I'm, I'm looking for you. Let's get into how to test first before we test. So number one is you need the plant to be exposed to light for a few hours. So you can't do this super early in the morning. You can do it after work. You can do it in the evening before the sun goes down, preferably. You can do it mid-afternoon, but you want the sun to be out for a few hours. We want the juices flowing before we go and assault the plant, okay? So first off, that. Secondly, is we want to do it at the same time every day if, if we are looking for the progression. So if we are looking at whether or not something's ready to harvest, for example, you want to look at the progression of it. You need to do it at the same time every single day. This will be your indicator as to whether or not it's time to harvest because if you do it at different times, it's going to yield different values because juices are flowing a little bit differently at different times in the day. Number two reason for this is if we are trying to identify if our foliar application or if you have chose to go the liquid fertilizer or granular, add compost, whatever it may be, tea, you name it, you want to know if it's working. And so to know if it's working, you again need to test at the same time every single day. So if you are in Canada and or anywhere where the sun decided that it's going goodbye again earlier in the day, you may want to choose a time that is early enough that you will have sunlight 
at the, the towards the end of the season. So from now to a month from now, if you know it's dark at 8 p.m. where you are, don't don't test at 8 p.m. You want to test earlier in the day. Make sense? Okay, great. That should be all the rules. Okay, we're going to be semi-civilized and do this at a table. Um, you can tell if it's not obvious. I came back from camping recently. Okay, so this is my blossom and rot one, obviously. So this one is my fresh one. It's not, I, I wouldn't depict this if I had to eat it tonight. I would have liked to have gone with riper, if you will, but here we are. So let's test this one first, see what we get. So this yielded A9. What you can do now is you can compare it against this chart right mm. here and to determine if where it sits. Poor, good, excellent, you name it. You can compare it to that. Let's look at now the Blossom and Rot one. Okay, so don't do what I'm doing to clean this off. I am a horrible scientist. You can use an alcohol swab though. That would be preferable, but she's dry. She's dry now. I do not want to take a bite out of this, but here we are in the name of science. You know what? It tastes sour. Oh God. Very difficult process, jeez Louise. Okay, you can't have seeds on it, so this does have to go. Pop that down. So this one's at like a seven. So, I mean, not horrible, but slightly lower. So that's interesting. Now, given, obviously this is good up here, so maybe that's the reason for that, but that is interesting. Huh. I should have never, ever have bought this thing. I am in love. I literally, I, I was like, let me just go get another one to test for them. I ran away and I went crazy testing everything. These sun golds are like a 12, which is crazy. Um, they're delicious, but they're a 12. Very cool. I am a broken human with not enough hobbies uh, and not enough friends, clearly, except for you guys. Uh, I just tested some cherry tomatoes that I, same kind, sun gold, um, that I harvested three, four days ago, and I put in the fridge, and I shit you not, the bricks value slower by five. Yeah. I don't know. I wish I knew how to film this. Like, I'm not that talented, uh, but it's a $30 bricks meter, so I mean, there's also that. Not that they like crazy so the nutrient content falls after you harvest it maybe that's why you should freeze it right away now i want to try something frozen but i have to get this video tomorrow so i can't try something frozen dang it someone try frozen and then comment let me know please thanks i want to test this one now too it's a berkeley tie by oh god that is so mealy it's a sound effect for me all right so this is like a six it has some issues though, so maybe that makes sense. But this one is a six. It's got a lot of issues actually. Okay, so that's cool. Let's test some greenery now. Any users, I uh, thought I was filming, so I filled this up already. But this is a garlic press, and inside of here is my grocery store uh, kale. And all you're gonna do is put it in. All you're gonna do is squeeze. So you see, you get a little drop out of there, a little droppy drop put some of the drops i do not have the hand strength for this I'm just i'm just a girl i need some man strength up in this beach okay there we go thought that, that's like my that's my favorite thing to do okay oh no what you want a kale shot you're that kind of a dog now i don't think so bucko okay i'm sorry M my grocery store kale is just hammered inside of that by the way the garlic press hack is literally what you use in the field so that's kind of funny holy crap okay this one is shocking it is like tops three i don't know what to expect from my tastes like green juice i guess okay i gotta get the grocery store kale it is that was like tops three maybe four um so that was interesting this needs to come out my dog thinks he's a herbivore now. Never in his life has he touched a friggin' green thingy. He's like meat only type plant or dog. Um, and now he's eating kale off the ground. So time and place, I guess. Freshly picked right out of my garden with aphids and everything. Hopefully that doesn't affect the bricks value. Oh, well, I guess we're going to find out. Stick her in. That's also equally as satisfying. 
playing with a garlic press. Oh, I've forgotten to har harvest my garlic. Still in my garden somewhere. It probably doesn't have any friggin' leaves left on it. <laughs> See, the things you think of. Okay, there's less juice in this. So that's, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but we're gonna have to really first or dab. It looks like my, like my bricks meter got in a fight with a alien. Drum roll, please. Don't let me forget my press outside. Please comment down below. Did you forget your garlic press outside? Ashley, it's outside. I will misplace this and lose it for like six months and be like, oh, my garlic press. Even though I put it just right there. I've got man eyes sometimes. Is it fun? It is at approximately a five. So there you go. It's at a five, which is interesting. Maybe that's why it has aphids. I don't know. Very possible. It was covered in aphids. Like it was bad. Not good. Not edible. It's going to live out its life peacefully in my garden without me mutilating it this next little bit. Uh, any hoosers, if you want to learn more about some tomato tricks and things I tried that yielded success, this video here. And if you want to know what Google thinks they know about you, that video right there. Geek Crew, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.